Welcome to the part three. From the cardiovascular system. In the part two, we reach to the level of the lymphatic vessels. As we know, when there is at the area of the blood capillaries, there is the area of exchange of the nutrient oxygen for CO2. Also, at that area, so there are some macromolecules will leak from the blood vessels and path tissues and the interstitial space it will be collected around the spaces between the cells usually we have that area plasma protein fluid enzyme lipid antibodies hormones so we need to scavenge these like the protein and the fluid and usually the process of the scavenge of these materials or molecules is by the lymphatic system and usually the lymphatic system will transport these collected material and fluid toward the lymph node where will they undergo a filtration process to remove the foreign bodies and then recycle it back into the venous circulation at the base of the neck Usually the lining of the lymphatic vessels is the endothelial uh, tissue, which is the endothelium, which is the symbol squamous epithelium. And usually the lymph flow only in one direction, and that's toward the base of the neck. Lymphatic vessels originate in the connective tissue as anastomosing capillaries. But these capillaries lack the basal lamina. And this allowed them to collect all of these macromolecules and fluids, antibodies, proteins. Usually the size range from 10 to 50 micrometer in diameter. Usually the central nervous system and the bone marrow has no lymphatic system. Large vessels may contain clinica intima, media, adventitia, but these may be difficult to discern at the level of the light mi of microscope okay because it's almost like a vein so it will be very difficult to differentiate them these lymphatic vessels from the veins the main duct of the lymphatic vessels we have the main thoracic duct which is structure is similar to the veins they have intima media adventitia and as I said, they contain the smooth muscle in the arteria media. Their diameters about five millimeters. They contain valves to prevent the backflow of the lymph. Usually, skeletal muscle has lymphatic only in the layer of the perimesium. And if you remember, the muscle have endomesium, perimesium, and epimesium. And the layer of perimesium is just around the muscle bundles. As we can see here. This is the lymphatic results and what we have here inside is the limb lymph as you can see here there is no red blood cells or white blood cells again this is arteriole this is a venules and this here the large anastomosing capillary this is the lymphatic results now we'll describe the heart histology again it consists of three layers we have inner layer middle layer and the outer coat usually the inner layer is called the endocardium whereas the middle layer is the myocardium and the outer coat is called the epicardium and the endocardium is homologous to tunica anthema whereas the myocardium is homologous to the tunica media and the outer coat is homologous to the epicardium. So this is the heart, this is the right ventricle, and this is the left. So the inner layer here, this is the endocardium. In the middle here, we have the myocardium, and outside we have the epicardium. Again, endocardium, 
myocardium and the layer that found outside this is the epicardium so we'll start with the endocardium which is lined by the endothelial cell which is the simplest squamous epithelium and usually the endocardium endothelium continuous with the blood vessels that enter and leaves the heart just beneath the endothelium we have a layer we call it the subendothelial layer this is a layer of the fiber fine collagenous fibers thin layer of the dense fibroelastic connective tissue the subendocardial layer of the loose connective tissue will be connected to the myocardium the subendocardial connective tissue is a loose connective tissue contains blood vessels nerve and portion of the impulse conducting system which is the Purkinje fiber which is a modified cardiac muscle it's not a Purkinje fiber that we saw in the cerebellum so this is the heart and this is the area where we have the simple squamous epithelium and this is the area of the subendocardium as I said we have two layers we have the subendothelial and subendocardium the subendothelial have dense irregular connective tissue where the subendocardium lose connective tissue and contain the Purkinje fibers the second layer we have which is the myocardium and it's contain the cardiac muscle and usually the muscle arrange into two layers we have the superficial layer and we have the deep layer the superficial layer the muscle spiral course around the ventricles you can see here they are almost like oblique in direction whereas the deep almost they have circular course around the cardiac or the heart as an organ so this is the area of the heart as I said the layer in the middle all of it is the cardiac muscles this is the area of the atrium this is the area of the ventricles and we have papillary muscles here inside we have the endothelium the myocardium which as I said we have the two layers the superficial and the deep layer this is the heart this is the area the endocardium myocardium and the outer layer here this is the area of the epicardium here we have papillary muscle and here we have the valve and you can see here from here to here extend the quarter tendon this is the area of the quarter tendon from outside we have the endothelium and in the middle here we have the connective tissue we have elastic and collagen fibers the outermost layer of the heart is the layer of the epicardium and usually this formed by the mesothelial cells and usually this layer is composed of the mesothelium and the epicardial which is called the epicardial mesothelium with the sub mesothelial connective tissue just let me show you here this is the epithelium which is the mesothelium and here we can see the sub mesothelial connective tissue this area here may be contain loose connective tissue and may contain adipose connective tissue white adipose connective tissue now we're going to talk about the cytoskeleton or the skeleton of the heart heart to be able to contract usually the muscle to contract we should have like origin and insertion so the heart is not 100 percent is made from muscle as a skeleton we have the fibrous skeleton and this fibrous skeleton consists of three parts the first one here we have the fibrous ring and this fibrous ring we have one around the aorta pulmonary artery also we have around the right and the left atrioventricular valves all of these separate 
the muscles of a different part of the heart for example this area here separate the atrium from the ventricles the second structure we have the membranous part which is found in the interventricular septum between the right and left ventricles then we have the fibrous triangle which is connect between the rings of the aortic and pulmonary here at this area here and separate them from the right and left atrioventricular valves so the valves we have we have one here because it's almost like a ring we call it fibrous ring okay that will be the fibrous ring and then here we have at this area here in the level of the interventricular septum another fibrous tissue divide the right and left ventricles and then at this area here we have the fibrous triangle which separate between the aortic rings and pulmonary rings from the right and the left atrioventricular valves In this slide, we use a special stain, as we can see here. This is the connective tissue, which is in the area of the fibrous ring, which separate the atrium from the ventricles. Okay, and usually the only connection between the atrium or ventricles will be through the bundle of His, which is responsible for transmission of the impulses inside the heart. The valve we have, we have the atrioventricular valve between right and left atrioventricular openings. We have the papillary muscle, we have the corda tendine, which connect the papillary muscle with these valves. Usually the valves have both dense and loose connective layers and usually surrounded by the endothelium. It's almost like the valve we saw in the veins for the controlling structure as we know is the heart is controlled uh, contraction is autonomous the control is not controlled by the nervous system it's from within the heart as we know we have the SA node and we have the AV node and we have the bundle of his the first one, the SA node, is found in the wall of the right atrium, just near the entrance of the cranial vena cava. Whereas the AV node found at the level of the atrial septum, then spread it through the bundle of his in the interventricular septum. We can see the first is coarse ventrally then reverse in direction we have right and we have the left and if you remember from the anatomy we said we have the septum marginalis trabeculi which works as a shortcut to transmit the impulses from the septum toward the wall to ensure a very fast and synchronized contraction same thing here for the AV node, as I said, it's found in the endocardium of the septal wall. Then we have the bundle of His. This bundle of His is composed from Purkinje cells. These Purkinje cells are modified muscle cells. These cells are very large. We can see they lose their cross striations. They are filled with glycogen. So these cells, they lose the structure and they lose the function. They lose the structure, they lose the amount of the fibril tissue, the agnomyosin is reduced. So the cells cannot perform a contraction function. And the other thing, they lose the function. I said they lose the structure and they lose the function. Instead of contraction, these cells, the main function is a conduction of the impulses inside 
the heart. And usually these Purkinje fibers, to search for them, you should find them in the area of the subendocardial tissue, just beneath the endothelium. As I said, these are the fibers, which modified Purkinje fibers. As I said, they travel ventrally in reverse and direction. And between these cells, usually there's a gap junction and there's a gap junction with the muscle cells. As I said, these cells is responsible for transmission of the impulses and this result with the uh, or result in the contraction of the cardiac muscles. So again, we have the SA node, AV node, then bundle of his. And this bundle of his is consists of Purkinje cells. For any reason, if there's any defect in the sinoatrial node, the AV node will take in control and will be responsible for polarization of the cardiac muscle and start the contraction of the cardiac muscle. Again, this is the Purkinje cells. As I said, there's no cross striations because they lost the fibril tissue. Also, because they lost the fibril tissue, they no, no more can contract. Instead, their main function is the signal transduction inside the heart.